Hi there. Seems like a lifetime ago since I did this to this Robo Sapiens version 1's arm. What I've done is to put a servo, difficult to see but is underneath the motor down there where there seems to be a bit of space. Put the servo in, put a servo arm up here with a link across to this lever. This lever then pushes on to this blue piece here and when it pushes on to that it opens the hand. The hand itself closes due to a spring and that was the big problem with this that the spring was too strong for the servo so it had to be having power to the servo all the time to keep it open. What it would have done in the past originally it had this piece in which if we get it the right way round you know the circle there went over the shaft where my metal plate is and that then pushed onto the blue part. The end of it this was the end of this 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 bush let's try again the end of that uh, black piece went operated by this cam here and this cam here only operated when the arm twisted. So you could only have the hand open when the arm was in a certain place. So I wanted to modify the arm so that the hand could open and close independently of the arm. At the time I decided the only way to do it was to use a small motor rather than the servo because the servo was pushed backwards but if I put a screw thread on here then the screw thread couldn't be pushed backwards and would stay where it was put. These are small lock motors as used in automatic door locks and things like that. Beautiful little things. The gearing on them is fantastic and they come in lots of different gearing ratios. So I now have completed my arm with a motor in it and here it is. I haven't put it back onto the Robo Sapien yet. Uh, indeed I don't know if I will. But what I've done then, the thing itself of course rotates uh, backwards and forwards. And what I've done is to insert here an uh, infrared detector, a reflection, opto reflection sensor, so that when something's put close to it, it will grab it. So let's see if we can get that to work. If we turn it on, then nothing happens. But if I then put my little piece in here, then the motor comes in and hopefully grips it, puts it over there and then lets it go and then should come back again ready for the next time. So yep, it seems to work okay and I, well, I would be happy with it apart from if it gets a bit of light on it. Oh, perhaps not. Oh, not in a moment. It has in the past operated on the light. Perhaps I should turn it round a bit more directly to the light. Let's try again. There we are. The light in the distance has actually operated it even though there's nothing there. This of course was a big mistake. I knew it was going to happen but yet didn't do anything about it. I still went ahead and used this detector rather than all the work I'd done on the 38 kilohertz reflectors as used in televisions. So, so disappointing, but it just happens to have made the mistake and there it goes, put the light on and off it goes, it doesn't have to sense something. Can't see an easy way around that. People talk about uh, different techniques but if the bright light is going to switch it on there's nothing else I don't think I can do about it. Mm. Bit 
of a shame really. So how have I actually done it? Uh, well, let's try and see if we can see inside. If we look at the side here, uh, perhaps we can go in a bit on that. Uh, can we see that there? Yeah. What we can see is the part of the nut or the threaded piece that I've put onto the motor shaft and here is the arm that comes across and that actually pushes onto the hand bit. So if I operate it, uh, put that in there, where are we? Operate it, put it, detected, we can see this piece moves away Oops, off it goes, goes away, opens up and then comes back again with this threaded piece uh, pushing against the lever which is opening the gear. So yeah, it works after a fashion but there it goes again, you can just see the thread before it dashes off. And then it opens at the far side and comes back again. If we have a look inside then, what have I actually done? I'll just tape this up, not put the screws back because... Because what? Uh, take that side off. And we can see into the motor, hopefully. And what can we see? Well, we can see that I've put uh, two micro switches on, or at least we can see one of the micro switches here, so that when this turns round, it comes round and bashes against that micro switch, which then switches off the motor. It's got a diode across it so that it can go in the opposite direction, and I've got a similar micro switch down at the bottom here so that the motor can't go too far. It's often been a problem with motors that to stop it. How does this circuit work? Well let's have a look at that. See if we can see what we've got. Uh, find my little drawing. Here we have the drawing. What we have is the motor here we can make this positive and negative and this positive and negative. So let's assume this is positive, the current flows through. That switch would normally be closed, so it'll go through the switch into the motor and then out through this switch and back out. It can't get through that diode, of course, because it's a one-way device, so it won't let it go. Once it gets to this end, it opens this switch. The electricity now can't flow through this diode, so the whole thing stops. When we pass the electricity the other way, so this becomes positive, the positive can throw through the diode, through the motor, through this switch which is still closed, and then back out again. until And then it moves across until it opens this switch again when it stops again. I find this a very useful mechanism for making sure that motors don't crash when the, when the processor crashes that's controlling it. Uh, what I've got up at this end is a little board. The motor that's driving it is actually down in the depth somewhere down there. And I've also put switches on that motor as well, which opens and closes the hand so that it can't go too far. Exactly the same circuit. How have I done the electronics? Well, the electronics I've used a pickaxe for. I like pickaxes, although I feel now I could buy an Arduino a lot cheaper, and indeed this, of course, could be done with an Arduino with a motor shield on it. So there we have, well, our pickaxe, I designed these some years ago, 2016. I managed to buy some cheap, cheap pickaxe chips. This happens to be an 18X chip, which is quite old now, but does the job for what I want. Mounted it onto this board, and then with my 
output bus at the ends so that I can just plug in my motor controller. This motor controller happens to be a three device which has three of the LM, not LM, what are they? L9, L9110 chips on, nice little motor driver chips, tiny little things, FETs, seem to work really well for me, really like them as opposed to some of the larger chips that are around or we used to use. Being a FET then it can be very small. It sort of has two contacts out, one goes to the, uh, well, one each side of the motor and then in between them they have a positive together. The other side has two ins, so in on this one sort of sends it in one direction and then high on this one sends it the opposite direction. Either both off or both on then it doesn't move. Needs the naught volts to each end of it. Beautiful little chip. Here's the sort of designs I did for designing this. This one is a three motor chip. Uses six of the output pins and two of the pins then are free to do something else with. I had wondered about turning the LED on and off with those. But I can't see how that could help with my problem. On the input side, I've just wired up uh, a little board, made like a little breadboard. It isn't exactly like this one, but this sort of gives the idea. A bit of a board comes across uh, and it comes to these, here yeah, the turn pin sockets that I use, but on the other one, I've just used normal sockets so I can plug wires into them. So yeah, I think that's as far as I've got with this. Seems to work reasonably well, apart from the hazard of exterior lights, which I've come across before with these opto sensors, reflective opto sensors, suddenly triggering because the light at the other side of the room's been switched on, and therefore I should have used 38 kilohertz as on TV remotes, but didn't and it's too much work to pull it in bits so I'm going to leave it at that for now so bye now bye